Did you ever get called up on stage to like volunteer for anything? At the Renaissance Fair, I helped a guy shove a knife down his throat. What? Yeah. That was one of the best days of my life. <laughs> Truly. She's funny. <laughs> for a girl. She's funny. I... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matt. That's a really nice thing to say. Well, sometimes, like, I watch some clips of this of like of this podcast, and you are like saying something so funny, and Connor's sitting here going, "A lot Connor, of people, what do you have to say?" A lot about of people that? say it. Well, a lot of people come on me and oh. uh, say they say Connor never laughs at anything Brooke says. I don't laugh at anything, but I'm not but like not hysterically. Laughing. I wish I had a, a Cody a Co. Yeah, yeah, Bro- yeah. Brittany Broski laugh. Like right. I don't because it would actually amplify our podcast a lot if I was right. like. <laughs> right. Do a Cody co- do a Cody Co laugh. What's Cody Co's laugh like? <laughs> that's pretty really good. That's pretty yeah, that that's, that's good. That's like the intro to our show. No, actually. Do, do Noel. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Um, you know what? Uh, t- today we're gonna start with an intro. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Brook and Connor Make a Podcast. Today it's Brook and Connor and Matt King Make a Podcast because we have one of our favorite people, favorite people, and good friends. Thank you so much, Connor. The feeling is mutual. Matt I, King, I'm a huge fan of the Brook and Connor. We are a podcast. huge fan of you as a person and as an internet persona, podcast host. <sighs> I gotta say, I, all I was, of your hats. I was, I was a little shooken up when you asked me last night. I it was really a sweet interaction. We I was at, telling I was, Connor about it. We were at knitting club. Yeah, and Brooke comes up. She goes, Matt, are you free tomorrow? And in my head, <laughs> I'm thinking, I hope she's asking about the podcast. I'm hope she's asking about the podcast. But I had to lower my expectations. <laughs> I'm like, it's probably not that. She maybe needs just a favor. No, because I would do that for you. I do. I know. You, I know you're an angel. Did you drive me to the airport. Me? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. You shouldn't drive oh. people to the airport. Never. No. And then never pick them up. I'm either. busy. Never. I would never ask any of in, anybody to do that for me. No. I know. I, it, w- I have and I would again. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to be asked because it puts someone in a weird position. I so, cannot get myself to the Uber lot ever. You can't? Very no. Easy. Cannot get. I can't I, do I even it. like to walk to it too. No. Sometimes that's faster than mm-hmm. the shuttle. No. I can't. I can't. Once no. I'm off the plane, it's like I need someone to get me from the gate. Well, So, so are you... Go ahead. People do, that don't know, LAX has a an, an lot. You can't order an Uber to pick you up from your gate. You have to either get on a shuttle or walk through a construction site to get to mm-hmm. this lot. And then once you order your Uber, once you're there, it's like 30 seconds because they're all waiting to go right. into this lot. It's supposed to make things more. 30 seconds and about 150 USD. Right. Yeah. And I heard depending on your trip, <laughs> actually, if you're not gone that long, it's better to just pay for the parking. I've heard that too. Than it is to um, go through Uber. Yeah, <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys so much for having me. Oh no, I was a last minute replacement. Can we say who I'm replacing or no? I don't know. But we can hint at it. Oh well, I won't give too much away. But I just got to say, it's an honor who I'm replacing. And if y'all knew who this was, <laughs> well, I I, I can't we wait can to say it. I think we should hint at it because it's more fun. Okay, it, they're gonna come on eventually. She's gonna come on eventually. She just couldn't come on today. Come and on I want- what? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Thank you. And I do want I want to really preface and reiterate that you are not a last resort or a you know nothing like that. You're my top choice ever all day every day. Thank and you, I hope bro. you know that. Thank yeah. You. Thank and you. Yeah. You were like fully on the docket. It was just like a. Of course, we can't. We can't. It's okay. okay. We have- it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I forgive you. Let's get into a good conversation. All right. We're having we're having someone on who is on one of our favorite shows to talk about on here. Yeah, and that's and we can leave it at that, and she'll yeah. be on eventually. Yeah, she- <laughs> I thought you were talking about me. <laughs> no, you're our favorite person. You're here. And I'm it's just awesome. like, please. I'm like, what the price, show am I on? The price. It was the Price is Right that you were on. Let's make In- a deal. Let's make a deal. Incredible episode of Let's Make a Deal. It's the featuring Christmas Matt special. King. Check it out. I think it's on Paramount Plus. Um, you and let's on- just say I. He go made for the a big deal, deal, all right. I he made a deal, deal, all right. Yes. You're, you're Incredible episode. You didn't yeah. know this. No, it will. I guess it happened around Christmas time. I don't feel like I shared an. Oh, that's me and Wayne Brady. <laughs> that's definitely a Photoshop version because I was wearing a reindeer costume <laughs> on it. I originally was going to be dressed like a star, and then I bought a star costume on Amazon Prime, and it looked like I was in the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> like it was a pointy cone right. head. Um, but I went on, and it is 
incredible what goes down on that episode. I would really recommend the episode. Is there an episode number that we could recommend to everyone? <sighs> just to go, go find to the it? Christmas specials Christmas of last special. season, and I think it's December 23rd's episode, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm in the thumbnail. I better be. It's, yeah, it's a really, really good watch. Wait. Wayne Grady, that's cool. Yeah. Who... Uh, what did you win? Um, Don't you get picked out of the crowd, or was it like an influencer, like celebrity? Someone who was, I think, a fan who was in charge of casting asked me to oh, okay. um, audition. And so Mike and I, Mike, my co-host, Mike Sheffer, my manager, my best friend, um, we both Love auditioned. Mike. And Mike didn't get it. Oh. I, oh, I feel horrible. Well, he put his hands behind his back in the audition. Like, they're asking questions about you, what you're into. Uh -huh. I'm just super excited. I'm like, right. I'm a podcast host. Right. You yeah. know, and Mike was just like, I like numbers. I'm very analytical. And I'm like, dude, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Hammer right. up. I was all <laughs> off the side of the camera. You got to sell me this pen. Yeah. I like numbers. <laughs> um, I really like pens. But, Can you actually give me that pen back? Oh, Mike. But I got on the show and... There's the big deal. You go down to the final round because mm -hmm. I originally won a uh, outdoor dining set that was worth like wow. six thousand dollars. I've been to Costco. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was like not only just a grill; it was like a grill cemented oh, into your wow. patio. Wow. But I don't own a house, right. so I'm like, I'm I don't know what I'm going right. to do with that. And I had the highest prize, and if you have the prize that's the highest at the end, you go for the big deal. Yeah. And that's where you risk it between door number one, door number Thank two. You. Door number three. All of them are good prizes, but one the of the grill was the top prize. Well, no, no it was. I had won that in a round earlier okay. in the show, and, the and then I level, risked it. You risked the grill. Risked the grill to pick between the doors. Okay, and um, I pick. I just w went for door number two. I'd spent all night. Just drinking happy hour, mm -hmm. watching Deal or No Deal, mm -hmm. or Let's Make a Deal, trying to figure out if there's a code, is there a system to it? Because only one person right. goes for the final deal. And I got you it. You got it. And I picked door number two. Door number one, six thousand five hundred dollars. Door number three was the grand prize trip to Europe. Oh. And <gasps> everything behind all the other doors. My door was a seventy-two inch QLED TV in a mid-century modern uh, credenza. Okay. I know you like your credenzas. You always talk about credenzas. I know. I feel like I, I brought that word into your life. You did. I didn't know what it was. Is that what's in your room currently? No. I put my credenza in Zane's room because his was bigger. Okay. So I bought another credenza. Yeah. But um, my Got TV a lot of credenzas is in awesome. Home. So everyone know, <laughs> you knew what a credenza was previously? Um, It's it's hard like, to say. Like, it's hard to say. Like pre- Matt King, you knew what a credenza was? Or? I think that was- Because I feel like you say, you talk, you talk a lot about credenzas. Because I went to your house one time and I'm like, I think you really need a credenza, right. Connor. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, I, I got one, by I... the way. I got a credenza. Oh. Yeah. What kind did we talk um, about? I got one from, uh, shoot, uh, West Elm and it was on sale. So like, mm -hmm. I, I'm not a West Elm, not in my budget. He got West money. Elm needs a huge wake up call. Uh-huh. Like, I need to talk to the CEO and be like, you- you're tripping balls. You're like off your because rocker. Yeah. This is a side table. What world do you live in that it's eight hundred dollars? It's West I Elm. Could, I could I could close my eyes and you're paying for the and name grab materials point. in the woods and build the exact same That's IKEA. Set. I implore yeah. you to. I might point. I yeah. might. Now tell me if you were to say, if say you didn't know what a credenza was and I say, What's a credenza? Food. A credenza would be food like to you. Like an appetizer. A credenza, yeah, like, like, like a, or a version of like a charcuterie, right. but with more like options. Like an Italian, uh, some or, sort of, yeah, yeah, Italian appetizer. Or I would think it would be like a part of the house, like a patio or something. Like, oh, let's go out on the credenza, and like have some wine. and have some credenza as well. Do you know what a pergola is? A merry-go-round. No, <laughs> isn't it like a merry-go-round? No, a pergola is like the thing that's on like your patio that usually like the ivy is like over. It's like a, the wooden thing, like a pergola. Oh, I was gonna say it's a oh, bird. No, it's I, a type of. It's you a know type what of... a pergola is because when you go to someone at a fancy house and you go, "Nice pergola," they're like, "Thank you." Wow. Oh no. I went I over would... to Phineas and Claudia's house and I was like, "I love your pergola," and they were like, "Thank you. You're the first person to really notice our pergola." That's that's, a, a, that's key. That's a level of unnecessary architecture that you really have to build your career around. Yes, that's it's what like I love it in like movies where you know like the guy's trying to sneak back into or see his like girlfriend. He has to climb the or, pergola and then it breaks or jumps through and like yeah. falls through. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's, that's a, a good. You've asked me what my favorite words are before, and pergola is a. Pergola or pergola? Oh, pergola. Pergola is a good one to add to that list. I read my favorite words on your podcast. <laughs> yeah. I, I list of favorite words. Oh, what were they? 
Sometimes uh, I have bad podcast memory. Like, well, I just you forget everything. I it's talk it's about. hard to remember episode by episode. It, it kind of blurs together. Words I like notes. Scallywag, nefarious, smashing, as in like he smashing, like, yeah. like the wild Norbears. Uh, vitriol, uh-huh. hankering, like I got a hankering. Uh-huh. Chow, like goodbye uh-huh. in, in Europe. <laughs> Rebuke, fuselage, uh-huh. which is the middle of an airplane. Yes. Apropos. Uh huh. Did I say that I right? Yeah. Apropro. Apropos. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was like, you know Greek? <laughs> Apropos. That's like what comes out before the entree. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ornery. The uh, under the credenza. <laughs> we're, we're having a propros under the credenza. <laughs> this Meet afternoon. me by the pergola. Uh, trope. Mm-hmm. Erroneous. More. Hmm, that doesn't seem right. What was that one? More. Like a large scale pattern. I feel like a See lot that. of these what are in a th- different language, Connor. <laughs> more. M O I R E. Why are you putting accents on them? Oh, more. Yeah, a large scale pa- pa- pattern. Pattern. Sorry, you you yeah. got to work on the spelling too if you're interested in all these words. More. Oh, it's a textile in wavy. with a wavy appearance, made from silk or wool or cotton. This one I can't pronounce, but man, I wish I could. Negligible. Balayage. Uh, balayage. Balayage. <laughs> <laughs> balayage is what. Balayage. <laughs> balayage. I don't know why you're adding. <laughs> Come join me. <laughs> Come join me on the coast. We're saying on the balayage. <laughs> Uh, Belliage is what girls get on their hair, right? Yes. Belliage like a is what? soft blonde. Have you ever switched up like your I've color? been blonde before. I was just telling Connor that. Yeah, I wanted to go back blonde just to have fun. Yeah. I'll, wait. I, it was I'll not ble- good. I'll bleach my hair if you bleach your hair. I, I, I could do it again. Yeah? Yeah, I went too hard the last time. What about if we do it? What if, oh, that's not. Nice. I, like, I went blonder than that. But Belliage is like out, right? That's out of style. Belliage is like. No, I we feel had like a moment ombre like, was out. Oh. Balayage took over ombre. I feel like balayage is still in. Balayage is what you get when you drink like a Smoothie King smoothie and you just sprint to like a bathroom in the mall. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what's happening there. Yeah. Um, um, you guys been having good days though? Yeah. And I, <laughs> what kind of question? <laughs> just in general? or? And I feel like we should just say before we get too into it, Matt, for people that don't know you, and I'm sure everybody does, but for people that don't, what's your elevator pitch? My elevator Who, pitch? Yeah. Um, I'm Matt King. I guess you could say I'm an internet personality. Right. I've been around the block for like the past eight years. Um, used to be a Viner, mm-hmm. part of the Vlog Squad. Now I host three podcasts. Uh, oh, congrats on the new one, by the way. Thank you very yes. much. It's called Good Influences. Good Influences. It's with me, awesome. Carly and Contro, Aaron Gilfoy, Mike Sheffer. We have our first episode out now, and I bet even more episodes are going to be out by the time you guys are listening and watching this. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and I have my own podcast, Hoot and a Half with Matt King, and then Unfiltered, Zane and Heath. Wow, Matt. That Thank you. That I don't is know my, that's how you do it. No, it's it's hard. Because it's we did be hard. three podcasts yesterday, and I fell asleep on the floor of Knitting Club. Oh, you, you were exhausted. I was exhausted. I think I fell asleep for two hours. I almost kind of napped with you. Like yeah. I, I was sharing the pillow. I didn't yeah, want to like, creep did, you out. I did kind of feel you around me. I couldn't acknowledge <laughs> you, <laughs> but I did feel you in my subconscious. You know, it felt intimate, but and I was like checking it on Patricia. Like, this is, is this okay <laughs> that I'm laying down with another girl right now? But, you know. I you was know, dead to the world. <laughs> I went. I had to go buy some last minute stuff because I'm going to Texas today for the fourth. Well, crap. Sorry. It's, we're recording we're, this in advance. It's okay. We can say it's okay. that, right? It's okay. Yeah, okay. totally Showbiz. fine. Sorry, I just my stomach dropped <laughs> like I had given away something huge. So I, I went out yesterday after, so we did um, our, our podcast yesterday, and then we did two episodes with Brittany and Sarah uh-huh. on their podcast. I'm nut dialing someone, by the way. My my term nut dialing, because yes. I don't wear underwear, I'm calling someone with my balls. I had to hang <laughs> up just now. I don't know whose number that was. People have pointed out that they know you're not wearing underwear. I know. You don't wear <laughs> underwear at all. No. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Connor, you're, you're gonna, gonna regret get that. Get me undies a sponsor. <laughs> um, no, I I don't like underwear. I think it's can, I, I, why put yourself in a box. Hmm. I probably am not fertile. I feel it, like if what? anything it would be the other way around. Wearing underwear would make you infertile due to compression. I think. Uh, well, like when I go on runs, I wear compression shorts. Uh huh. Because that's supposed to not make you fertile. What was I talking about? Oh, so we we did two <laughs> episodes of Brittany oh. Broski and Sarah Showers podcast violating community mm-hmm. guidelines. Um. We, uh. And that absolutely like destroyed my brain for some reason like doing ours and then doing two of those episodes and i had to go out yesterday and i met my buddy at zara as you do as yeah. as one does we did happy hour at zara they should put a bar in zara absolutely well that you can get six drinks at while you're waiting to get it to pay because yeah, that's how right. long it takes <laughs> yeah i'm not a shoplifter but they make it very tempting not out of necessity but out of impatience right mm-hmm. i will zara steal is, from zara is tough 
Um, anyways, so I go meet him and I was talking to him. I'm like, I really don't want to complain to you because I know that like you work in sales and you work from nine to five, sometimes later, sometimes earlier to later. Like, and he's like, dude, like, I think you're kind of giving us a lot of credit. Like I work from home. I like do stuff during the day that isn't work. I kind of only work for three hours a day. Like when you're on a podcast, you're talking and talking, your brain's on, like Jump your down. whole body's on. And then right. w- when you get off, it's like, like just, I can't get a word out. Yeah. Truly, I couldn't get a word out last night. Did you sometimes though, like after you finish recording, you still want to keep going though? No, nah, not once. Uh, no. Sometimes, sometimes I do get kind of like, <laughs> a ride that high a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I know. When we do our high episodes, I I don't want it to end. I Anna wanna, really I wants to do, do a high that. episode. You stop smoking weed. I'm having real. I'm having difficulties. Although, look at my new piercing. I got. It's a weed leaf to commemorate my stop, stoner era. Stop smoking weed. Gets a gold I, well, leaf piercing. It, it's in memoriam. <laughs> yeah. Celebrating myself. You guys who I used should, to be. Should do a high episode. It's kind of fun. The first time you'll hate it, and then you'll fall in love with it. I think maybe that could be. I've been sound off, so paranoid. Sound off in the emails or the comments. We should could we could either do that as like bonus content too. We could do an episode of that a week. That's what we do, Patreon. People it love would it. kind of it would kind of be like a well I probably don't have a panic attack in the studio. It's uh, been really bad. I'll I bring you a Kalanapin. I'll come no, I, on and I'll be I'll I'll be your buddy. I can keep you balanced. Yeah, that'd be fun. People are having people around is worse. <laughs> nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. I can't even <laughs> explain to you what's happening. Because it's like Rationally, I know that if that happens, I could be like, okay, you're high, calm down. But in the moment, it's like I have six seconds to live. I'm going to die on the way to the hospital. I, I don't know what's happening. You wouldn't have to pay the bills. Yeah, that is a good point. Hey, guys, we're going to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode. One of my favorites, BetterHelp. How well would you take care of your car if you knew you had to keep it for your entire life? That's how our brains work, so why don't we treat them that way? How we care for our minds affects how we experience life, so it's important to invest time and care into keeping them healthy. There are plenty of ways to support a healthy brain, like learning a new language or taking power naps. I told you my power naps are good for me. Wow. (laughs) Even if they're four hours. Proof is in the pudding. There's also BetterHelp Online Therapy. Yeah. I don't have to tell you twice, honey. No, I know. How much I love therapy. I know. And you know what Wednesdays are? Therapy day. Therapy days. Also, I used our code for BetterHelp and it was like... Phenomenal! It makes a huge difference. It really does, doesn't yeah. it? I'm loving Just have it. Have someone to talk to. Yeah, but, well, BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat-only therapy sessions. So if you don't want to see anyone on camera, you really don't you have, have to. to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. I can attest to that. And you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours, two days, if Our, you add it up. Oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Math. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com/bnc. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash B-A-N-D-C. Um, what do we... I was going to say... <laughs> this isn't my podcast. I'm no, so, so used to like... <laughs> so we went on Matt's podcast, my, Matt's and Mike's, and uh, we were sitting there and like, you guys have a really structured thing going on and like, you're able to reel it back to a sort of... Stru- we have a very loose structure. Uh-huh. We're like... We're not married to the structure, you know? Like, if we go off on a tangent and it feels valuable to us, then we lean into it. Then let's do that. And so, but I I admire, like, you guys having kind of a a track or a path. We're kind of just, like, blindfolded running through a forest. Right. That happened yesterday, too, with Brittany and Sarah's. They have a structure and they have notes very well thought out. And poor Brittany and Sarah just... I kept being like, do you you mind if I talk for 10 minutes? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, I'm like, no, this is your podcast, but I have a tangent that I really need to. And then I'd be, and then Sarah would be like, I was like, oh yeah, that's why my parents like really, we have this disconnect there since like spring of 2010. And she's like, okay, so we're talking about Zane and Heath and like internet duos and how, and I was like, oh shit. Um, you kind of black out sometimes when you go on a tangent. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We were talking about internet duos and just the internet in general. Yeah on their podcast yesterday and I just know absolutely nothing about the internet pre TikTok. Like you weren't like an OG YouTube Not watcher. At all. I'm I'm similar to that. I wasn't really on Vine either. All I watched was just like stupid like like people falling probably. <laughs> and like pets. <laughs> like I never I just never got into it. So it's just such a different world to me and it's just crazy that I'm sitting next to the champion. Yeah. 
Uh, of me? Yes. Of what? The Vine and the internet before TikTok. I guess so. I, really? It's cool seeing you guys come up in this whole wave of TikTok, and I love that we're like friends. Mm-hmm. I feel like I manifested you guys too, like in my life as well. Because that's, that's a trick over nice. here. Man, <laughs> wait. Oh my God. Oh my God. Another manifestation that happened. Okay, so we. Whenever you manifest something on, in, he- in, in here, this in this space, it, it'll happen. It happens, Ooh. and we're being very careful with, because whoever's here that's doing fairly god parents or whatever yeah. are, like, sitting here listening, like, they're, like, run. they must be running low on fuel because we've been using and abusing them on accident, mm-hmm. not intentionally. Mm-mm. We need to be You start, need to be very more careful. Inten- be very careful. Because, okay, so I, it was in New York. You just told this. No, and I never have dreams. Oh. And I wake up, and I... I got a new phone, so I didn't have numbers. And I get this text from a random number, and it's like, hey, man, kind of miss you. And I was like, "That was it." this could be anybody, literally. And I was like, hey, so I hate sending in a text. It's like, hey, I'm so sorry I lost all my numbers, because it's like bullshit most of the time when people say that. Mm-hmm. I genuinely lost all my numbers. If you're my friend, please send me a text. But I go, who's this? Matt. I it's had a me. dream about Matt. like, And I, oh. I text him. So... I told you, I was like, you were like, it was more your dream for some reason. Like, you were more in it than I was. Like, <laughs> I don't totally get how that works. But, like, it was totally yours. And I was just, like, there. And I never have dreams, let alone remember my dreams. And it was you were fully in it, like, the whole time. And then when I texted you back, you were scrolling on your FYP. And he sent a screenshot. And my text popped up when the video of me on Grey's uh-huh. TikTok was on his FYP and he was like halfway through it and I had texted. universe connection. And I never send texts like right. that. Hey, I kind of miss you right. because sometimes <laughs> even when I'm trying to like reach out to people, I'm always like, it's just to say hi, yeah. I miss you. I feel like that person is going to think, That's oh, a tough they, they, to hi, I they miss want you. something. I, who, is this? <laughs> who is this? Yeah, yeah, but I understood because you responded in the group chat like I lost everybody's contact yeah. that I don't yeah. know. And then I said, hey, it's Matt. Because I just woke up that morning and I was You're thinking right. of you because I had missed you over the weekend. And I'm like, shit, Connor, because Connor's a great just like partier great on the weekends partier. and everything. Yeah. I love it when you're around and you weren't there. He's and then lost. I realized Fourth of July weekend was coming up. And you, I wasn't gonna yeah. be around for you. I'm like, I hope I see you. And whoa, sure enough, whoa, weird. The vibrations were whoa, there. Whoa, mm-hmm. really weird because we, like, I probably wouldn't have seen you this week at all, right? If our our guests, wow. if we didn't switch around guests, wow. also. Wow. And the text, like, it was man of a stage. That is freaky. It's true. It is freaky. Woo. It is. It is really scary. Oh what the universe it is. It really is. Of. SNL. SNL. This is no. really off topic. Did you see um, Alexandra Daddario got married? Not Mary. at all off oh. topic for this studio. Not Did at you see all. The pictures. Yeah. Saw them this morning. Beautiful. She's... And I didn't want to. Ryan, so sorry out there. <gasps> um, How did you? Have you met her? I've never met her. No. How but, do you like? I used to have, still do have a big crush on her. We but all I, do. I'm madly in love with my girlfriend. She's not <laughs> married. I'm giving up on any of this. But I can't believe the day I went to Alexandra Daddario's in a uh, TikTok account, and it said she was a Fabula fan account. Connor Wood. Well, do you know what it says now? Connor like, Wood. At all? Do you so, know what it says now? What? Connor Wood and Brooke Average Shut fan up. account. No, I would no, not lie she to you saw, about that. She saw our podcast when we were like. Because she finally took it out, so it was like Connor Wood fan account for the longest time. Connor Wood and Brooke Avery fan account. She took David Dobrik off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, she took both of us out, and I think- I And don't... then we talked about how Connor- Well, no, you were in it. You and David were in it, and then she removed that fully, and then we talked about how it was sad to see you go, and then she put this in it. Did you, all talk, did you guys like DM? Like, what's going on in the I DM? I DM'd her, she didn't answer We me. didn't. No, me and her have like several <laughs> several days of DMs. Wow. Yeah. Which like. But from a while ago, right? Yeah, it was a, it was a while ago, and I, I I told this story before, but I was just basically like left her on red, uh, because I'm dumb as shit, and I have ADHD, and I uh-huh. don't take anything for it. So I like just like wasn't thinking about it, and it was also like a very transformative time, and where I, TikTok was my entire life. Mm-hmm. Right. There was a bunch of DMs coming in. I was kind of like working my butt off on TikTok, so I was like not getting to my DMs so much, right. and then someone saw that like my name is in her bio or whatever and I was like oh sh- I need to respond to her and I was then I got a little drunk and I was like I come back and I'm like this is like like if I die I want this like on my tombstone like printed out was she dating that guy during this time she's very quiet like with her life so I didn't I don't know this guy came out of nowhere 
I mean, she's, I'm happy she's, for yeah. it. She's in that like Sydney Sweeney. I'm gonna date someone. Is he famous or anything? I think he's like a director, producer kind of guy, screenwriter. She, she kept it in the industry. That's really lucrative. And well, she's tagging strategy. everybody in these posts. Yeah, uh, I love that suit though. I know. I, I want to rock. I that. like the whole vibe here. It's it's. If he's a producer, he's doing a really good job. Producing. He's producing. Yeah. Yeah. The, how long till she has a kid? Do you think? I don't know, but I'd like to congratulate her in person one day, maybe with her in this chair. Because I was thinking, you know how you know how she was in Percy Jackson? No. Yes. I never saw Percy Jackson. Oh my actually. god, great set of movies. Uh-huh. That's super weird Isn't coming that weird? from you. Um, and but there's a new Percy Jackson, by the way, who's just like people are freaking. He's very young, but he got cast. They're rebooting. They're rebooting. They're rebooting. They're retooting. How many Percy Jacksons are there? I think that's one of those. It feels too soon to reboot. I know it does, but it's not because we're. Not, it's never too soon to reboot. No, it's nowadays. We can reboot. Reboot, reuse, recycle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm all for a reboot every now and then. Yeah. But what were we talking? About? Oh, so she was in Percy Jackson, and it it brings me back because like you have this kid, and then suddenly they figure out they're. Is Percy a, a royal? Wizard? No, not a wizard. It's, I thought it's a titan. It's a myth. It's a myth. I want to say Mythbusters. It's a... A god. Greek, god. Greek, he's a Greek, Greek god. mythology. He's a myth. That's what it's based on. He's a myth, but he's like a myth bust. He's a... No. A you're myth a myth. Bust. You're a myth. He's a myth bust. You're a myth person. No, he's like, he's like Percy Jackson. He's like a... He finds out. It's really... I need to reread the book. I don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, I'm like curious. Like He could come out. He's going to be probably the most gorgeous... I keep saying he. This person is going to be the most gorgeous per- And she's not even pregnant. What am I doing right what a, now? Wait, you're telling me Alexandra Daddario's future kid oh. is going to be the future Percy Jackson? I think I lost you somewhere. No, he's going to have superpowers because he's going to be so... Cute? Hot? Good looking. Are we, and I keep saying he for some reason. Can we move on? Yeah, sure. Yes, I, who got, who is this person? It. Andrew he's Form a, is a film producer. Oh, he's a producer. Oh. And he's with... Uh, he co-founded Platinum Dunes with Michael Bay and Brad Fuller. I know Brad Fuller's Mo- son. Shout out to Cameron Here's Fuller. a question. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. What d- d- exactly does a producer do? Um, They... Uh, they help like produce it, make everything happen. So what's the like, difference between producer and They're not like directing and, and calling the shots. Right. They're just like we need these people to do. They're almost like the caster, like casting director, but for the entire production. So of then, the what does movie. the casting director do? They cast the actors in the movie. Then what does the producer do? He helped produce. You know, like you produce. The producer is basically like, the person responsible for finding and, and launching, launching a project. project. Well, yeah. So anyone can. They you know arrange how, the financing. They are, they are like they they yeah they cast. So if the you team. donate money to a film, you're a producer. You're an executive. You're producer. an executive producer. If you're anyone can that. be a producer. No offense. Zendaya is an executive. No, in, not everyone can. You be can a be an executive producer. That's pretty easy. You just give money. But it, that seems executive producer feels like it should be harder to be than a regular producer. Zendaya is an executive. Don't produ- you think? You're writing executive. A tr- just in, in name, in title. Right. I'm pretty sure, I uh, there's a whole film crew here. I, I think executive producer is like you give money and you get the title of executive producer. Producer, you're doing a lot more work of arranging the team. Yeah. <laughs> what do I, I know? I feel like I'm, well, basically like a, an executive producer requires screenplays for the yeah. development. So they pitch ideas to the TV commissioners and they deal with the legal, right. financial, marketing aspects of the TV series or movie series. Like so not really at all. Oh, that. sorry. So like, well, I <laughs> I gave money to a film production and I became an executive producer on it because I gave money. So what film did you help execute? It was a produce? short. It was a short film. <laughs> it was a short film, okay. but it was with uh, Tony Revolori. From Grand, Tony Revolori. from Grand Budapest Hotel, wow. the lobby boy, oh, that's and really cool. Isabel Furman, and the, Isabel Furman, the girl in the Orphan. So it was, it was a wow. cool production. Wow, that's really cool, man. That we, is very we cool. We did not get into Sundance, but oh, well, that's okay. Next sorry. time, yeah. I've never been to, and I haven't been elected to Sundance either. So it's really not that big of a deal. Mm-mm. You know, I got asked to invest in uh, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child for like Vancouver or Toronto. What do you mean? Like they, a, a guy asked a me to write a check for fifty thousand dollars. He's putting it on in like Toronto and asked me to give money to like invest in the production. And I was like, oh. "Why are you I asking me?" There send are them my of, way. I'll give them whatever they want. I would have taken a mortgage out on my own. You know. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't have it, but yeah. I just hope it's a hit in Toronto. I think it will be. How everything is. I feel like everything that happens in Canada just tr- trickle down effect. Mm-hmm. Like makes it way better. Uh, Drake, Justin Bieber, Shawn Mendes, Cody uh, Co. Cody Co. Cody Co. How could Nathan we forget? Nathan Fielder. Yep. Yes, so true. Now that you mention it, he got. Um, never mind. 
So we have this link about Taylor Lautner's wife. Did you guys already talk about? Well, this? no, we didn't talk about this, but I saw this this morning and it shocked me to my core. I don't. Okay. Yeah. So uh, pull up this video, guys. What is the video? You'll can, see. Can you preface it? I no. It, I think you just go in blind. Do you know who Taylor Lautner is? Yeah. Okay. Well, just read. She's saying, "Okay, this was my crush that I grew up with." And the person. And I'm paraphrasing because I'm not wearing my. So it's show yeah. us your crush yeah. versus the person you you ended up with. Yeah. Okay, she's showing her childhood crush, and that's going to go ahead and be Robert Pattinson as Edward Cullen. Okay. Okay, who could blame her? And now that's Taylor Lautner. Get out. Wait, and Which... her name's Taylor? Yeah, so Taylor Lautner's married to a woman named Taylor. That's her. Her so crush. So both of their names are Taylor, Taylor and Taylor Lautner. Lautner. Could you yeah, do that? Yeah, I don't know if she changed her last name to Lautner, though. That's something to look oh, into. Cool. But, but can you imagine growing up having a being like having an insane crush on Edward? And then marrying the guy who plays Jacob. Well, it seems like you're a big fan and you would take anything like you could get to get just <laughs> close to it. Me? Like, yeah. Like, of course. Like, she couldn't get Robert Pattinson and like Taylor Lautner hit on her and you'd say yes. No, wouldn't I wouldn't. You? No. A oh, bullshit, no. bro. No, I, I would not. You would say no to Taylor Lautner. Mm. Come on. Like, if he hit on you. Right. You would uh, you would eventually meet Robert Pattinson. Robert it's, Pattinson would probably, I probably show wouldn't. up. I probably wouldn't. I don't. I doubt they talk. I don't believe that for a second. It's so hard when you're so ingrained in the Twilight community as one is and as the I spider am. Spider monkey or <laughs> yeah, my spider monkey sweater. I yeah. read I read you Twilight all the way up until like halfway <laughs> through New Moon because like all the girls that I really liked read Twilight and I thought it would be a great way to right. connect with them. Yeah, well, it's an incredible franchise, an incredible saga, and um, I just am so fiercely Team Edward that I don't think I could do that. Okay. Like, just like from a principal standpoint. But do you think that's, because some people have done this TikTok trend, Mm -hmm. what she was doing is like, Mm -hmm. show who your childhood crush is and who you ended up with. And most of the time, it's someone who looks like that Exactly. This was a different take. Okay. Yeah. Do you think that is true, though? Do you think sometimes people end up with like people who look like their childhood crushes? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I think that's I think true. people also end up with people that look like their parents. parents. Yeah. Uh, yeah, kind of. Kind of. And also, I think almost all married people look alike that I've seen recently. They look like, alike. No offense, you and Patricia look like twins. We do. It's, we are that <laughs> siblings are dating kind of. Yeah. Like, there's a reason siblings are dating is so popular. Also, I think I could also be just getting confused because once couples have kids, you see both of the parents in the kid. So then you start to think, okay, the parents look alike, but really you're just thinking I've seen a morph of them, so I'm thinking they look alike right. because I've seen the product of two of them morph together, mm-hmm. kinda. Do you ever like hope that your kid looks like one of like your aunts or your uncles, but not like your parents? Yes. You know. I ho- I don't I hope that my kids don't that look like <laughs> like my sister. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, I, don't cheat. I do hope that. Um, I don't really thoughts. have that much to say about the topic. Oh, honestly, okay. like, I who was your who was your childhood crush? Who <laughs> sexual awakening? Um, I mean, sexual awakening. It's always like animated characters, so I'd rather not di- dive Me into too, that. Con. Really? It's okay. Yeah. It's not off limits. Really? Yeah. What what animated? Um, the lioness from Lion King. Yeah, that's oh, a big one. That's Nala. A big one. Nala. Yeah. You are not alone, honey. It's really freaky to say yeah. I'm not. It, no. It's weird to say. You're not alone. And then uh, Goofy Movie. Yes. Oh, that's a yes. Uni- Roxanne. Roxanne. Roxanne is a universal Roxanne. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like. They knew what well, they were doing when yeah. they made Roxanne. Yeah. Yeah. But she wasn't. But but she wasn't attracted I mean, like, to what her dad looked like because Roxanne's dad in Goofy movie is huge. Remember, he's just like, <gasps> she's oh. like, daddy. <laughs> like, like, remember he like greets him yeah, on the front porch. Yeah, I guess it doesn't apply to everyone. Roxanne, but... <laughs> you, you know what? You know that scene. I can't tell if Goofy movie like did Gladiator steal inspiration from the Goofy movie. Oh, yeah. You know the scene where they're like in the wheat, and like. You know the scene in Gladiator where he's like yeah. just trying to get back home no, and his wife that. and his kids are in the wheat and he's trying to get to it. In the Goofy movie, there's this scene where she's standing in the wheat and he sees the back of her. You know? That's probably based off of Gladiator if what you're telling no, me. No, no, no. Other way around. Gladiator came out in 1990, like, oh. nine. Yeah. Goofy movie came out in 96. So you're saying Gladiator's based off of the Goofy movie? At least just stole some there's cinematography a, yeah. from That's a lot to... That is we a lot have to digest. Do- Oh my god! You should actually, Matt, make a TikTok or whatever. Have you? No. Then the you thing should. Is, I'm the only. I feel like I have 1995. 
then you should. That's something important that you need to point out. Oh, came out on Cinco de Mayo. Oh, that's incredible news. Effective. There's no way. Yeah, you should point that out. The similarities between the Goofy movie and Gladiator, that's a thesis waiting I'm, to happen. I'm on it. I am on it. Uh, I was going to say, oh, yeah, my celebrity obsession started really, really early at around age three with The Count. Here we go. I'm sorry. I <laughs> have to. The, the I count, mean, if like, we were talking about it, it's related to the subject count, matter. The Count? From Sesame Street. Oh, yeah, Count and Dracula. My, my, no, The Count. But he's a Dracula, right? He's like a he count, he vampire. Isn't, Dracu count. isn't Dracula one man? Count Dracula. Count, that's his name. No, he's Count, count von, von Count. Count Von Count? He's not Dracula. What kind Bro of name is that? He has fangs. Isn't Dracula the name? Dracula's not another word for the vampire. He was Count Dracula. Isn't it yes, weird? Yes, in his name is Dracula. That this is a play that this is a play on the fact that they call any vampires Count Dracula because it counts numbers. It, but you know what I hate? He only has four fingers. If you're teaching kids to count, give him five fingers. Oh my God! He's running, he can't even count to ten with all hands, <laughs> and he's, oh, he and he's the count. I'm embarrassed to say I didn't oh. know that about him. <laughs> I just right, I just saw that. <laughs> that he's like, point, <laughs> how does he count to ten? But um, oh. that was my first experience of being like a full groupie. It was at Sesame Street on Ice. I th tried to throw myself on the rink <laughs> <laughs> for the count. Right. Did you ever get called up on stage to like volunteer for anything? At the Renaissance Fair, I helped a guy shove a knife down his throat. What? Yeah. That was one of the best days of my life. <laughs> Truly. She's funny. <laughs> For a girl. She is funny. I, <laughs> she, thanks, Matt. That's a really nice thing to say. Well, sometimes like I watch some clips of this of like of this podcast and you are like saying something so funny and Connor's in here going. A lot Connor, of what do you have to say? A lot about of people that? say it. Well, a lot of people come on me and huh? uh say they say Connor never <laughs>, laughs at anything Brooke says. I don't laugh at anything. Well, I, I know your laugh. brain. You're, I know. Well, you're thinking of something really funny. I think well, a lot yeah. of times I'll be like, no, that was really funny. And in, in movies, I'm like, that was really funny. That was my favorite part. But I'm not but like, not hysterically. I wish I had a, a Cody Co. Yeah, Brittany, yeah, Bro yeah. Brittany Broski laugh. Like, right. I don't, because it would actually amplify our podcast a lot if I was right. like, <laughs> right. Do a Cody Co do a Cody Co laugh. What's Cody Co's laugh like? <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. good. Yeah, that's that was, pretty that's good. That's like the intro to our show, no, do, actually. Do Noel. Um, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> what is his laugh? Oh, sometimes when he's like really tickled. I can't remember it. I can't. It's okay. I'm not a good laugher either. Um, I should try out some new laughs. But what did I say that was funny now that you mention it? Um, what else she was do you like about shove me? a knife oh, down a guy? It was <laughs> the best day of your life at the Renaissance Oh, fair. yeah. I just felt like every all eyes were on me. Just That was just a good wow. day. I felt like You really, liked that? All, so yeah. at what turning point? Because she won't. She's, oh, yeah. She's I, don't, nervous I won't get on stage anymore. She's nervous about getting on stage now. Ever. I can tell you exactly what happened. It was really weird. I loved being on stage growing up. Mm -hmm. I was in all the plays. It was my favorite thing in the world. And then I was in 10th grade and I was giving a presentation on Crystal Knot, which is like a riot that happened during the Holocaust. <laughs> That's not funny. Not funny. And, um, <laughs> and I was giving a presentation and all of a sudden I just like looked out. There, you want to laugh? Okay, I'm telling a very serious oh, story about my just, trauma. Was, I think Connor was just like trying to like get a laugh. I'm just working I, on myself I'll, I'll over wait. here. Okay, no, no, yeah, no. Tell us about the Holocaust. We're so sorry. No, it's completely Sorry that I killed the vibe. It's completely fine. Go um, back to the Holocaust. Yeah. And well, I actually do want to take a sip of this. Matt, what do you want to talk about? And I was giving a presentation, <laughs> and then I just, I don't know what happened. I looked out, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, I can't continue talking. And I didn't. And I was just like, I just said, like, to my history teacher, I was like, I'm going to stop now. And I just never, and then after that, I had to tell all my teachers, like, please, like, can I write a paper instead of giving a presentation? And then I could do it again in college, and it was fine, but, like, I'm still very, like, I, I don't know. It's just, like, immediate, like, it's, you have, I freeze. You've I freeze. always said you have that conditioned, maybe you need to recondition response, your Pavlov, your Pavlov yeah, yourself. Yeah, it sucks, because, like, rationally, like, I can think rationally. Like, okay, you're fine, like, what's the worst that could happen, whatever, and I just, like, I, it's, like, I freeze. You take some beta blockers. I've tried, but they like make me fall asleep. Oh. So it's like when I need to like be active and. And is it even worse if the people who are in the audience are there to see you? Yeah. They are rooting for you. It's they even love worse. you. Yeah. That's so much worse because there's pressure on it. 
There's no pressure on it, actually. No, that's it's a, the opposite. No, I'm it's excited it, to see you. No, it's the opposite of what you Here's, no. You know that saying, picture, yeah. picture everybody naked? Yes. Could you imagine? That would you be like, worse for me. Look at 100 naked people. I'd be like, what the fuck? Are, why are you guys all naked? Why am I not <laughs> naked? Did you guys have a group text and no one told me to be naked here? Like, there would be so much going, more going on in my head right. that isn't like, hi, I'd like to talk about Abraham Lincoln. Mm-hmm. I'd like to do my presentation on electricity and Benjamin Franklin. Mm-hmm. Why is everyone naked? It would just be really distracting. Right. I so that wouldn't really help you either? No, it wouldn't help me. Would it help I don't know if what, everyone I don't... there hated you? I that would be better. Or I just try to picture that like maybe they are as nervous as you are. Like they have they are battling all of their own anxieties and insecurities just as much as you are. Maybe even like put it in your brain where it's like they're struggling more than you are. One time I went so to go you see empower uh, yourself. how to succeed in business on Broadway. I was in that musical. In high school? Yeah, I was Bud Frump. I wish I had gone and seen you. But I play at the company I went way. to go see Darren Chris on Broadway because I was so obsessed with him and I got so nervous. I got such stage fright on behalf of him because I was so nervous for him to go on that I <laughs> walked out, couldn't see the show. Stop. No, I like did, I don't know. I got so nervous for him. I was like, if he messes up Who at the end of my life. This... My, my mom, my grandma. And you made them leave the show because of how nervous you were? Mm-hmm. Brooke. What? I know, but you're working on it. You're seeing a therapist, <laughs> all of that. I'm, yeah. I'm happy for you. Thanks so much. That's really sweet. Um, Theater guy. If I can't take my coffee break, something within me dies. Well, you didn't even see it, so no, you wouldn't I know did. any of this. Well, no, we went back the next day. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I was able to see it. You, What what matters is when you get knocked down, you get back up and you try again. <laughs> That's super, pay- super So true. I was able to see Darren Chris and how to succeed in business the second time around. Yep. Yeah. And he did amazing. I bet he did. Yeah. Hey, guys. Want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Pros. There's no one-size-fits-all solution when it comes to hair care. A product that works wonders for curls might make straight hair limp and greasy. Thanks to my personalized Pros routine, I can honestly say I've never been more in love with my hair. I haven't been more in love with your hair either. Really? Yes. Get over here. Pros makes custom hair care that's effective because it's personal, using natural ingredients with proven results. Pros customizes every product in your routine from shampoo to supplements. First, Pros starts by asking about you as a person mm. with their in depth consultation. Pros ask me really unexpected things like eating habits. Important. They're important, personal. Exercise habits. I'm a gym rat. That was easy for me to answer. Yeah. Et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. Um, damage level two for me because I'm in the sun a lot. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next pros analyze all my answers and determined what unique blend of ingredients should be in every product in my custom routine together pros got all my hair care covered um, I use the con- so I never used conditioner before right so I use the conditioner that's made for me and I tell other people don't touch that that's my pros mm-hmm. it's not gonna work for you oh, I, I can't say that it won't I'm not a pros <laughs> scientist right but that's mine right so Connor, uh, <laughs> if you're not 100% positive pros is the best hair care you've had, they will take the products back. No questions asked. No way. Dead serious. Pros has a healthy hair regimen with your name all over it. Take your free in-depth hair consultation and get 15% off your first order today. Go to pros.com slash BNC. That's P-R-O-S-E dot com slash B-A-N-D-C. Why are you laughing? I don't know. For your free in-depth hair consultation and 15% off. Did you guys have Knitting Club last night? We sure did. We sure did. How'd it go? Oh, I'm hitting a great stride with my baby blanket. It is looking so oh. good. It looks so good. And you did something by accident you to your blanket. It? Did you bring it? I brought it. You did something by accident that I'm wishing I knew how to replicate. Um, I know. I know. And I wish you knew what it was that you did. Oh, this is looking so good. It's I think so I'm good, almost... Matt. I'm so proud of you. Well, you saved it. Uh, Channing, our friend, messed it up, and I was, you know, I lost time. I wasn't able to do it right. for weeks. Right. Um, but this is the baby blanket. Here I can. Oh, thank you, bro. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Of course. Look at this. It's really good, Matt. That's really See all this good. Uh, at the beginning, I don't know what he work. did there, but it's pretty cool. Yeah. So I need to figure that out for the ending. So right. So you can replicate new. it at the end. But gosh, I couldn't thank you enough, Brooke. Like, oh, Brooke. it is. It, I like all I want in the world is for people to love knitting as much as I love knitting. Uh, we're starting a movement. I bet yeah. you there is a peak 
in people who are Googling how to knit. Because doesn't Google Analytics have that? It'll you search track, it. Yeah. Uh, Since she's been putting out those TikToks, I feel like there has been a surge. I wonder. There for sure has. Well, people love you in it because you can just tell how your passion and excitement for it's knitting true. jumps out of it the shines. screen. It shines. It shines. I want to wrap really this does. up because I want to start something new because I feel like I'm... What I just do you don't... think you'll make next? I think I have a question about the baby blanket vest. really quick oh, okay. before we move on from the... Is it a baby blanket because it's so small or is it a baby blanket because you're going to give it to a baby? I'm giving it to a baby. That's so uh, cool. Patricia's, my girlfriend's uh, brother and his wife are having a baby. That is so sexy. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, man. Not the baby, but like that. <laughs> it's very cool. You could get into knitting. I think you could. No, he couldn't. No. Why not? He doesn't have the patience. It requires an immense amount of patience and focus. I will say yesterday I went to um, get my ear pierced in an event and this girl was talking to me and Sally Dar about knitting and she was like, yeah, I really want to get into knitting because it seems like one of those things you don't need to be talented to do it. You could just do it. And me and Sally Dar, you could tell like we were both like, mm -hmm. okay. Uh huh. Uh -huh. We were like, yes, totally. That's so true. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But then we both laughed and we we're like, Fuck that. well, I mean, like, you are kind of following, <laughs> like, playing devil's advocate. You, you're following a. There is natural, God given skill and talent. Like, some people are better than others. Yeah. But, like, the same could be said about painting. Like, some people are good at painting and some people. You can't learn to paint. You could. You're saying you can learn. You could learn how to color in a coloring book and, like, follow a thing, but, like, you can learn to knit. You're not going to be. You're not going to excel if you don't have natural skill. Can I? Say, I'm weirded out when adults like color use coloring books. Really? Sometimes I'm like, come on. Like, I do think it's really something else. I guess so. Like, I'd rather knit, but but it's are... just like you just colored a page. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Actually, I'll respect to people who color. With knitting, no, I'm on your side. I feel I like mean, I just think shame it's... on you. I feel like anyone can learn to knit, but the stitches are kind of like handwriting in the sense that like. Like the letters like are either look good or they don't like people just like. But you feel takes... like you've gotten better. Yes, I've definitely gotten better. With, with like time. I used to only be able to knit a scarf. Yeah, right. Right. And now. And but I've I, gotten better too. I can you, knit you get and better. pearl. I think that, that the God given piece is that you have the drive, the passion, the focus. And No, I genuinely and the think that some people's stitches are just better than others just in terms of their tension and the, the tightness, etc. Okay. You could probably learn to You're so good. Tightness. Yours is so good, Matt. Thanks, bro. I really would not just say that. I'm really, truly proud of you. I hope you... I mean, not that I... I mean, it's so good. Not that I'm like the authority of, of knitting, but... Ooh, I just pulled a muscle on my arm. Can we react to something? Yeah. Well, we can do... You can, I'm gonna yeah, we offer can, we you. Can I'm gonna offer you. To something. I have two. I have three options for you. Okay. Okay, and you can tell me which is the most pleasing to you. One, you can go through our hinge profiles because you've given me help in the past on my hinge profile, and I've since updated it, and that's something we can do again. Two, we have a food item that could be quick, so we could do that in okay. addition. Let's do the food item in addition to either hinge or we have a video that's more so like Brooks Corner, something that I'm passionate about that I want to show you guys to react to. So it's really, we'll do the- Let's do the food okay. and then I'll see how I okay. feel. Okay. Let's do the food and then we can see how you okay. feel. Sounds good, man. Okay. Stand by. All right. <laughs> Are you can having I pee fun? really quick? Okay, so here, just like some background on this. This was not a weird food uh, suggestion that we have. And there was one person that slid in the DMs and said, stop doing it. You that guys really are, you, affected you. That you guys are pretty happened. annoying when you try new food. So that's not what they said. Oh, that's how I took it. <laughs> what she what she said? She was just like, "Love you guys." Like it might might be time to stop. <laughs> yeah, to me, I heard "kill yourself." Yeah, I know. So <laughs> I uh, to you, I say, today we're going to be trying an interesting food. Um, I kind of went on a little bit of a health kick because yeah. my friend's mom is like OG health nut. My mom is too, but this this woman is just like can spit out facts about everything mm. in one year out the other for me. But I did get all the stuff that she said. So purple sweet potatoes apparently really good for you. Oh, very, I've heard very that. Very antioxidant. I figured out how to make them in the air fryer. Very easy if anybody wants that. Um, you just get them raw. You kind of whatever. That was really good for you. Kiwis are really good for you. I have a kiwi every day now. Green apples and something interesting has has transpired. What is it? She said squid ink. What? Have you ever had squid ink pasta? I have. I'm sure that's not what she meant I have. in terms of the health. Um, but it's really good. But when, I, when I'm when i saying that she uh, told me everything good about it, I forgot. Wow. So I'm going to say, so squid ink has antimicrobial properties. Thank totally God. love that. for Anti-cancer effects, maybe. Broad. Boost your immunity. Sure. Lo that's good. Reduce hypertension or high blood pressure. 
aff- have effects against retroviruses, and it may treat ulcers. So all, all those things is like it may, can, right. can, may, may. Possibly. I'm waiting for the like. We're gonna do this in like right. 30 seconds. Our faces are gonna turn blue. Where where are the stressing oh, out it's these? On, it's on WebMD. So oh. take that with a grain oh. of salt. But, I bet the next line is like will cause cancer w- w- right. in 30 seconds. But right. where is this squid factory where they're stressing these squids out and extracting the ink on these... SpongeBob? That episode of SpongeBob. You're thinking of jellyfish. La, 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 la. That kind of thing that happens when like Pluto has a pet dog and like SpongeBob can hunt jellyfish. It's like those are animals too. Why didn't you personify them? SpongeBob's a sponge. But they're like, those are alive. But yeah, but the jellyfish are like butterflies, though, right? Oh like, my god! I literally just at this moment realized SpongeBob is probably a sea sponge and not a kitchen sink sponge. Well, when he's on land, he's a kitchen sink sponge. Yeah, but I guess when he's in the sea, he's a sea sponge, huh? He's part of the pollution. Yeah. He lives yeah. in a pineapple, pineapple under the sea. Yeah. And he's a sponge. Right. So, like, deductive reasoning. Right. Wouldn't... Well, Sandy's a squirrel and she lives in the sea. She's in a tank. She's, she's in, in tank. she's protected. Yeah. And technically, if you think about it, she's like in outer space. And Squidward's the squid. Yeah. Squidward's the squid. How is she, when you think about it technically, how is she in outer space? Because she's wearing a suit. Right. Squidward never inks though on the show, no, right? No, I don't. I haven't seen. That would have been a it. weird episode yeah. if Squidward Ooh, suddenly yeah. was just like inking all over the place. I've actually seen some of those like fan fiction. fan fiction things. It's really foul. Are we about to try the ink though? We're right going to try the ink. I brought some. So I dipped and th- it with this. A by the way, chip. if you're watching on YouTube, this is the episode of SpongeBob where uh, Mr. Krabs is ex- exploiting, for capitalism reasons, all of the jellyfish, and SpongeBob finds out, and it's just tragic. But he saves all of them. I feel like you and Mr. Krabs would ha- get along really well. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about this. <laughs> or We're this. <laughs> We're talking about this. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I see myself in him, but I also I see myself in... I guess it's just him, really. Yeah. I have my You're first dollar I made uh, spray, yeah, I know framed you, in my you house. Do. You do. I love it. It's cool. Yeah. Anyways, okay, so I brought... This is, uh, I got this on Amazon. It's cuttlefish ink. Hmm. Um, can I ask what a cuttlefish is? You don't know what a cuttlefish is? It's, no. It's a type of squid. You can, oh, okay. You can see it on it, here. It like, changes colors. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Cuttlefishes are- C-U-T-T-L-E. Yeah. Cuttlefishes are the coolest things at like an oh. aquarium when these you are, ever go up to a cuttlefish tank. They, these fascinate me because apparently squids are like some of the smartest creatures on- Earth. Oh, yeah. So- Did you see my octopus yeah. teacher? No. Very weird because I was thinking kind of- are you like hot? In like, are you like attracted to this? Watch it. It's like very strange. Um, also, I'm gonna get you a book that I want you to read. I really don't want to talk about it because it's we're getting into like bestiality territory here. But there's a book um, called the dolphin one. You've told me about this before. I have. It's a paperback <laughs> on Amazon. It's called Wet Goddess. <laughs> Go on. Well, basically, this is it, not the first time he's told me about what God is. I'm really fascinated by like where our heads were at in like the 40s and 50s, besides World War II, um, of course. But uh, there was a lot of experiments happening. Here it is on screen if you're watching on YouTube. The Wet Goddess paperback was was published in 2009. It's $20. It's a tell-all basically from this woman who was part of an experiment, and I'm mincing words, so it's not. I'm not 100. She was part of an experiment where um, it's set at the height of the Vietnam protests. Jimi Hendrix, LSD. It's a story of strange encounters, awkward misadventures, and ultimately, love. And the love that you're going to hear about is between a human woman and a dolphin. Mm -hmm. And basically, the U.S. government was seeing if they could use dolphins, because they were pretty smart, obviously. Dolphins are smart, to work as, like, spies against our enemies. And so they put... And they were seeing if they could teach dolphins a language, the human language. So they had this girl live in a house that was... I think like up to her waist or something in water and the dolphin and her, it was just them for like 45 days or something. They ended up fucking Mm -hmm. naturally. She fucked the dolphin? They were having sexual relations is my understanding. And get this, this is really, it's so tragic. This is like a modern love story is they ended up like the experiments over. They're like, no, like it didn't happen. Um, The wet goddess is the woman. Wet goddess moves on naturally as people do. Dolphin goes into an enclosure and kills itself. Wow. Because it was in love with the woman. Wow. So she writes her love story. I'm going to say it's very strange. Did you read this whole thing? 
Did she? Like, yeah, they were right. actually having sex. I have seen I'm, a video on the internet of someone giving a dolphin so, a blowjob. <laughs> so we're, we're, Never mind. I, it's, a, no, it's a dark side of the internet. I was going to ask what site. I don't. It was on Reddit, and it was like a GIF, and it was just one of those like uh, I don't know. You know. I can't remember. Should we There's, try the ink? Yeah, yes. Yeah, so we try, try the ink. ink. Let's okay. get. Uh, I don't even. So <laughs> yeah, put that in. I don't. So uh, <laughs> it, mm -hmm. it I didn't Google it. I didn't Google I've it. You found it. me. It wasn't your I'm, fault. I'm pretty sure I've said weirder stuff. Okay, so servings. There's about eleven servings in here. So s serving size is one teaspoon. Um, we didn't really know what to do, so we're just going to dip a chip in it. Okay. I didn't, I didn't look up any ways that you can eat it, and I don't want to now because we're going to eat it with a chip. Um, these are – here, you might want that as a chaser, right. actually. Water bottle. No, Should no, no, we no. Google how you're supposed to eat no, squid no, no, ink no, or no, just no, go no, in no, completely? because we don't really have that option. We don't I know have we don't have that right option, now. but I think it could be interesting to know how we're supposed to eat it think versus well, how we are eating it. Fish. Yeah, it's supposed oh to be God, in pasta. Is, oh. It's supposed to be in pasta. Um, if you want to see it, it's it's got the consistency of ink. It like looks what, like, kind like, of like a can of Vegemite. Oh, my Whoa. God. <laughs> what? I don't smell it. Ooh, that is fishy. That is like. I can't participate to oh, today. Oh, I'm doing it. Holy sh. Ah, ah. Don't smell it anymore. How are you doing that? Ooh. No, that is foul. Oh, I wasn't really Holy. expecting it to have a scent. So it smells like if you. Uh, like a foreign like fish. Like found market. a fish in your car. After oh, like a my week. God. Holy smoke. <laughs> Stop oh. doing it. I don't know. It smells like, I don't know. Do you feel high? Like, I don't know. Not it's like I'm abroad. I don't know. Like oh, I'm you just, like it? Yeah. I okay. don't, there's something, I don't know, kind of, okay. Kind of endearing about. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's, holy just, ugh. it's so bad, oh it's kind of go good. Ahead, you two. Go ahead, you two. So keep in mind I haven't eaten. I can't even get the damn chip. Nothing like it. getting my day started with. Oh, oh guys, you're going I in. To, I want you to see the consistency. Whoa, of this. that is dark. It It really, oh. My, I don't even know if I want to do that much. I really appreciate you knowing uh, right off the bat. I'm not going to do it. Not even trying to convince me. To us. To you guys. Not that bad. Oh. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like that. Have another chip. It tastes as. Connor, have a few chips. When does this expire? Con oh. When did you get this? <laughs> I don't think it's the expiry date is the, the issue. I don't. Put yeah. On, put your back on it. <laughs> oh, well, it expires in 2025. Yeah. So. Yeah. Some preservatives in there. <laughs> uh, how was it, Con? So it was really good. <laughs> Are you gonna have more? <laughs> Want just? Matt's going in for seconds. Ooh. Wow. You two are that brave. That is not good. Yeah, no, I didn't think it would be. But it was. But it's fun. But it is really. <laughs> I'm having fun though. <laughs> I'm so glad you're such a good sport. It is really good in pasta. Well, it's not. It's like it's, it's already, just like it's, cooked they make in the, the noodles, sauce. They make the noodles with the. Yeah, the I don't. Thing. Yeah, I'm sure they. You didn't like, really have any visceral reaction there. He, I think he you likes like. It. Are you a big fish fan? Yeah, I like fish. I mean, I like anchovies too. Oh. Like I pop an anchovy sometimes. Really, like, a few times a week by myself. It's like my like little weird midnight snack. I eat lox plain, but I don't think that's as severe as. I this. think salmon um, is very different from what I just experienced. Yeah. Oh. I'm just trying. I'm trying to shake off like the taste. Have another chip, just plain, because I the chip help. The chip helped. You dipped your second chip back into the ink. The chip did help. Yeah. Now, if we would have done that with like an unsalted chip, we would have had to call a show pretty much immediately because I would have threw up uh, all yeah. over the. I thought you were going to. I I almost threw up before yeah. I put it in yeah. my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that because it's making me sick. <laughs> I know, but like I can't throw up. Like really? I throw up once a year, maybe. Oh. Like you know, rarely. Oh my god! Oh. Yeah, You're lucky. I don't think I've thrown up in like two years, maybe. Um. Oh, wow. Oh. Well. <laughs> no, it's bad. <laughs> it's bad, yeah, it's but like... it's fun though. I don't know. It's like well, it's a fun little party thing. <laughs> Just... I, These poor cuttlefish, know, I, though. I don't know how they get this ink out onto uh, them. That's a lot of ink. How many cuttlefish did it take just to fill this bottle? How much was it? Well, it kind of tastes like they may have already been dead when they got it. Oh uh, my god! Speaking of squids, I'm actually on Mariana Trench talk. Oh. In terms of just I'm like on being, that too. You're on my, I would rather go into space for a year than be in the Mariana Trench for an hour. You know, I've I been think. to the Mariana Trench like nine times. 
There's no way. Yeah. What? It's Bro. so hard to get to the Mariana Trench. You've been over it. You haven't been in the Mariana Trench. There's no way David. you've been in the Mariana Trench, No, I Connor. can't. Shut Brooke. I lived in Guam for years. My dad was in the military. Yeah, but you don't just go into the Mariana Trench. You can take a glass boat. Into the Mariana Trench? Over. Not, no, yeah. Like, yeah. I basically haven't been into the Mariana you Trench. You said that. How am I to know? Okay, I'm getting sick so of my stomach. Deep. Actually Isn't that like, like eight miles deep, Mariana Trench? Man, shout out to Mariana. Imagine getting a trench named after you. Is Mariana a person? She has to be. It's called <laughs> Mariana. Or if that's like Marina. No, like, it's Mariana. No, it's Mariana. It's Mariana. That just looks like the scariest place on earth. And that's where the big um, giant squids are. Yes. Which is really a fascinating species. I love. <laughs> I was about to say. The Mariana <laughs> Trench. Mariana Trench. That's, pr- yeah. Um, actually, like, I've had one experience. I'm recently scared of heights. I told you that. <laughs> You're recently scared. Yeah. Like, I'm just very aware. But I had one time when I was in Bali, and I was snorkeling, and the water there is so clear that, like, we went off of a shelf, um, and, you know, like a shelf, there was, like, a reef, and then it, there is a channel uh-huh. for boats to go there, and I kind of went out, and I could see the bottom but I was so high up and the water so clear that I felt like I mean stomach dropped like oh. feeling like I was gonna fall oh. and hit the ground oh that's really scary I'm yeah. scared of looking up at heights whoa like when you're like you look up at like a tall building it makes me want to like oh, fall yeah. backwards that's kind of oh. freaky yeah there's a lot of freaky stuff when I was a kid I would go to Sam's Club and like I hated looking at the ceiling at like Sam's Club and Costco that's crazy it was really high it's a very that's a very uh specific it's an experience yeah, uh-huh. yeah. really well, but i'm, I'm a- feeling it yeah. like it's making me feel a little queasy it could be the squid ink i'm also know. scared of heights that goes without saying i'm scared of everything i assume so yeah <laughs> <laughs> um i was gonna well, say i was just gonna say really quick okay brooke told me last episode we were talking about the summer i turned pretty did you watch any of it no i didn't i you watched caught it the tail i end. watched the finale with brooke <laughs> mm. while i was knitting and she was just crying away i'm like what's happening i wasn't even <laughs> crying that bad no you were sniffling. it was a little i was a little teary whereas the most of the reactions are people sobbing i felt bad because i thought like i was like ruining the ending i thought this was just one episode no and then you're like that was the finale yeah n- yeah like, what? Well, i ain't watching it i no i i think it's a little a, i did I it, I enjoyed it in the sense that it was entertaining, but I do think it's overrated, to be honest. I um, as an actor, yeah. that's never gotten a role. I know how ri- how things should be written mm-hmm. and read. The, I got eight minutes in and went back to Prehistoric Planet. Right. Those dinosaurs <laughs> and Love Island. Those are the two shows I'm watching because they're real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're raw. Yeah. And that show was so painful. Everything was like. Whoa, you've really changed since last summer. Me? (laughs) Conrad, are you drunk? Mom's going to kill us. I'm like, Conrad is 17. He should be chugging a four loaf. He should be fucked up and he should fall asleep on the beach. It's just like, I don't know who it was written for. And I I don't like shows that cosplay being poor. Because, like, I don't know, like, that wasn't representative of a single summer of mine. Maybe there's a community of people that can relate to going out to a gorgeous, like, (laughs) billionaire. It felt like if, it felt like if Outer Banks was written by, like, someone. Wap, on Wattpad? No, not even, like, less than that. Like, like, it felt like if Outer Banks was written by a Mormon. Oh, like it was very vanilla. The first eight minutes. I'm sorry. Well, you of missed the part. One. It was like so vanilla, and then all of a sudden, the mom's having sex with someone in the car. It was like very random. Wait, hot. Yeah, you should keep watching. I think you'd really like that part. I just like the title, "The Summer I Turned Pretty." I was saying to Connor, I'm still fingers crossed for this summer for me. Well, we, I was yeah. about to ask you, like, did you have a summer no. when you were younger where you turned like very I pretty? I got really no. fat one summer. I wore a swimming cap in the pool every <laughs> summer until I was like. Old, too old to be wearing a swimming cap, swimming cap in the hot tub. I'm gonna rewrite. I'm gonna re- <laughs> in the hot tub. I'm gonna rewrite uh, this show and call it the summer I went on one Royal Caribbean cruise and finished 75 soft serve ice cream cones. And got fat. <laughs> that yeah. They were free. I encourage you. My parents were like, "Are you? Do you really want another one?" I was like, <laughs> "Yes." Like I was like 11, like probably gained like 45 pounds. Speaking of Wattpad, though. 
they're implementing like some sort of creator fund for Wattpad where you can make a lot of money off of we writing talked, fan fiction. We talked about this yesterday and about how like a lot of like Fiverr writers, Sarah Shower was yeah. saying, will not accept ca- yeah. money. Wattpad plans to pay out a total of 2.6 million to writers in 2022 through its creators program. So I'm the, I know you're the only person I've ever read my fan fiction to. I've read it. What? I read him my fan fiction. The Matthew Gray Goose yeah. one. Can I even say that? Yeah, that's fine. I people know that that exists. Well, the thing about the manifestation on this set is that I talked about reading you that podcast, and then the next day I met Matthew with you. I can't believe it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that. I mean, you guys have talked yeah. about that a lot yeah. on here, but yeah, Brooke was the first person I texted right when I saw Matthew Gray Goose. Mm-hmm. Well, Brooke, this is huge. Wattpad, you can be I making know. some serious money. I, but how are they just going to be? Do people now have to start pay to read things on Wattpad though? Like, where does this? No, money I come think from? that to me, this same is way as TikTok, probably they just like have the fun. Oh wow! But to me, this this always feels like a cry for help for a website. Like they really need to incentivize writers right. to k- submit pieces. Also, like I was I was watching something on TikTok. I think this girl was like, "You can make a side hustle out of writing for Medium." Oh yeah, you can. Yeah, I think it's really I think it's harder than it. it is being portrayed though. Are you a good the, writer? The company's Wattpad Creator Programs plans to pay out a total of $2.6 million to writers in 2022. To be eligible, the writers must have published in a news story part in the last three months at least one completed novel length story. 50,000 words or more in their catalog. I could do it. At least one in an <laughs> eligible genre and reached a minimum number of engaged readers as based on Wattpad's story statistics resource. Interesting. I'm going to start doing that at Knitting Club. Fan. Writing fan. Have you ever read a fan fiction? Um, yeah, I've what? read some fan what? fictions. Well, I've what read, about I, a I've dolphin read, and a? <laughs> I've read <laughs> Blog Squad fan fictions when I heard they existed, and I was so excited. Are, there, are you in them? Yes, but I'm never like the love interest. Like nothing happens to me. It's like Matt then texted David, like can't wait for the party tonight, <laughs> dude. Like it's just that's my role in it. I'm just a supporting character. No one has ever written one about me. But um, well, I'm kind of annoyed that we haven't gotten any written about us, and well, I feel like I'm opening bro, a can of we, worm. We, you just, we're in the manifestation room. I well, I, I it's not that I want one. It's just that I don't know why there hasn't been one. Well, it's keep a, in mind this is, has been shown to ruin a lot of duos. I don't think it would ruin us. I think it could only make us stronger. Matt, I'm curious. I want to ask you something. Shoot. Um, I've seen you around a lot of famous people. I'm just curious, like, who's, like, the most famous person that... That I've ever met? Yeah. Or, like, that you, like, have a... Any, any oh, sort like, of... I met Paul McCartney one time. That was kind of oh. cool. I met him, we like, have the at, same birthday. I met him and Lorne Michaels shook yeah. both of their hands <laughs> what? in, like, wow. one moment. That was one where I was like, wow. That's an awesome Pleasure to meet no. you guys. Yeah, that, that was pretty very, cool. Wait, what was what was the scenario there? Oh, Bruce there? Springsteen. I did a crossword puzzle with Bruce Springsteen one time. That was pretty how cool. Do, how did that come about? Oh, just uh, my former life and the people that I knew through all of that. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I don't need to. You can that's Google it and figure out how those moments happen, but I'm not going to like, wow, share that's it insane. out. Wow, that's insane. But those are like some just wild times hanging out with those people. Yeah. Um, that would say that would be the most famous person maybe paul mccartney yeah and well, bruce I mean, that is probably the most famous person daniel day lewis too i went to italy with <laughs> oh my god it was a wild trip yeah I that's bet. insane it's a different Matt. time it was a different <laughs> i never time. really have been that public about like that stuff oh, that was like one of my big it. questions because i've seen you like meet people and i'm like what the fu- how did you well you know what i think though, you're also I was... so good with people like you don't get you don't panic when you are with somebody that's super famous you I tr- I... you go up and you're just like somebody that that kind of person would want to engage with kind of but i still kind of like i get nervous connor though i think you're really good at like you charm, but you charm people really fast. Like mm-hmm. the whole Matthew Gray Goobler thing, how you went up and you kept the conversation going, but it grew. But I was kept him. I kept him in the conversation. But Connor, like, made yes. it like a moment. Sure, like it was funny, and he was like, "Oh, I, I vibe with you guys." Yeah. Kind well, of. Patricia Kinda. brought me a safety pen, and we hooked his button back yeah. on his on his blazer. But you have like that, that was, that was just page. like very lucky. But it's it's like an escape room. Like you have to figure out how to like make them talk to you yeah. and like want to respond and not just like, Can I get a picture? Right. Didn't didn't figure it out with That's Ashton I- Kutcher. <laughs> <laughs> Did not figure it out. He was like, get the f-. like if his lawyers would have been there, I would probably be behind bars. Right. It's a learning curve. We have to wrap up. We well, could talk for hours. Ugh. 
Well, this was really, really great. Thank you guys so much for Thanks having for me on. on. Thank Everybody, you so much for coming. Everyone who is listening and watching this podcast, you are where you need to be. These are the best people to be oh listening God. and You're watching to on the internet. Like, I kind. think you guys are just awesome. We and love you. And go ahead and plug everything that's going on. Uh, yes. Go check out my new podcast, Good Influences, with Carly and Contro, Aaron Gilfoy, Mike Sheffer, um, my own podcast, Hoot and a Half, and Matt King. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok if I ever end up making TikToks. Do it all. I really do appreciate it. And uh, have a good week, guys. Good week. We love you, Matt. Good we week love back. You. BNC listeners, thank you guys so much. Please uh, leave a review on Spotify. Those mean a lot to me personally. Mm -hmm. um, and then email us uh, if you want. Whatever you want. Totally no pressure. Uh, this, will be, this will be airing after 4th of July. So funny, I guess, 4th of July stories. Um, if you get too drunk, we'd love to read those too. Those are funny. Yeah, I want to come back. I know. We'd love have me back well, we'll anytime. We'll do the high episode with you. Yeah, oh. I yeah. I think I could use Please. you then. Yeah. Oh, as a funny. safety blanket. I'm here for you. Okay, I'm I actually you. I'm gonna take you up on that. Cool. Okay, we'll make it happen. Okay. All right, guys. Bye, guys. Love you guys. Toodles. Talk next uh, sometime. See you. Bye. Okay. Oh, bye. Bye.